All right, our first question is from Dylan Peed 95 Are SARMs a useful tool or a gimmick? That's you. Uh, did you pick this out? Yeah, you. Uh, I, I know. I sent it you. It was over, Dylan who peed. Well, I sent him over a. Uh, it, it, first of all, define or tell me the difference between a SARM and a peptide. Uh, are they. What's so, the difference? So peptides uh, are are uh, compounds that can cause other actions in the body or can be turned into other things in the body. So this is supposedly. A SARM is a drug. So SARM stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator. So what that means is that these compounds are designed to attach to the androgen receptors in the body and to cause some actions. Now, what are the androgen receptors in your body responsible for? Well, they're responsible for the masculinization of your body. So facial hair, deepening of your voice, uh, oily skin, you know, that kind of stuff. But they're also responsible for muscle building uh, to some respect. So testosterone attaches to the androgen receptor. All steroids attach to the androgen receptor. So SARMs were invented to attach to the androgen receptor but to, to cause those receptors to exert the muscle building effects without exerting the masculinizing effects. Because that's like the magic, that's the magic formula, right? In pharmaceuticals is can we make a drug that gives you all the wonderful benefits of testosterone minus the masculinizing effects? That way women can use them. That way we can give them to people who need to strengthen their bones and their muscles because those masculinizing effects, as much mm. as, as bodybuilders and you know, roid heads like them because, you know, you start to feel aggressive and all that stuff. When you're, when you're giving this to the average person, they don't necessarily want to feel that, especially women or if you have to give them to kids or, or whatever. So that's the goal behind these drugs. They're totally new. These, these drugs have one or two, you know, you know, they're not, none of them are FDA approved. Um, the, the most, the one that's been most tested, I'm not quite sure what phase of, of trial it's in but it still hasn't been approved. Many of them have been dropped by the FDA because of, of negative effects. Um, and here's what the anecdotes are saying. So I've, I, I've, I've been really deep in SARMs for a long time. I have no interest in using them because these are research chemicals. They're not FDA approved. A lot of people haven't used them yet for us to really know what they're doing. Now, does, does the the peptide? I know this is a SARMs question, but I'm personally curious because I get a lot of questions around the peptides. Yes, mm -hmm. and they even though you just define them, they still sound very similar to me. They I are mean, research both, chemicals. Yeah, research chemical. They both are supposed to have an effect that hopefully produces more testosterone or growth hormone. Right. Or, Whatever. So even though one sounds like it's specific to Anderson receptors, I feel like that they're both kind of similar. No. Yeah. So like uh, the peptides, uh, like for example, some peptides you'll you'll use. Supposedly, what they'll do is they'll have your body release way more growth hormone or insulin-like growth factor IGF-1, which are both anabolic hormones and, and all that stuff. But again, the problem is first off, how are they legal? Like you think to yourself, what, what, these things are not FDA approved. How the hell are people getting their hands on them? There's a gray area in, in regulation when it comes to, pro, to to these compounds. You can legally sell them as research chemicals. What you can't do is sell them for human consumption. So the way they're getting around it is you go online and you're buying a research chemical and it'll say clearly not for human consumption, although that's what people are doing. But people are literally experimenting on themselves with these products. That's what's that's what you're doing. Yeah, how do they go around that? Like uh, I mean, are they pretending that, you know, they're they're running some kind of like lab somewhere or is this just like well, whatever? I, I mean, it's interesting to me that cuz I we've been uh, anti-SARMs for since the beginning. Uh but, you know, where else are you going to get something like this where we can we can go test? Like so let's just say somebody uh, buys the latest and greatest SARM <clears throat> and we've now got these forums where all these people are talking and sharing what they're feeling, what they're noticing. I mean, maybe one of the best ways to test this with that big of masses coming together. And I think the ones that get popular are the ones that have the most amount of people that have used them and said positive things in comparison to negative things. The, the, Isn't that how they get, get to where everyone starts talking about them? So the, the most popular ones are popular because uh, they're, they're the ones that people say give you the most gains. 
People literally don't give a shit about side, side effects. effects. They don't. Yeah. Think about steroids. I think can't about, see color anymore, but it's cool. Yeah, think about any drug. You know what I mean? When you think, okay, think, first off, think of the population that's attracted to SARMs. It's not general. General population doesn't give a shit. Most people don't know what it is. The only people who are interested in it are either biohackers mm -hmm. or like you know people who want to find a steroid but don't want to go to the black market. Oh, I can buy this online type of deal. They're not in the, they're not in a mental state to give a shit about side effects. In fact, if they gain muscle. They're really happy and they really don't care. So. Yeah, my case was always that I, 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 if I'm going to take that, I may as well just take testosterone. That's well, how I felt. Testosterone's and, way more effective. Yeah, it's, and we it's, know what it does. Right. So that that it, I what I don't understand is is doing that instead of like they're not they definitely aren't proven to be safer. So why would mm -hmm. people go there? They, it's the legal side of it, I'm sure. Yeah, come on. No, know, nobody's, that, no one's people going, still think like that. I, though. It is crazy. People think that first of all, you can order steroids online probably just as easily <laughs> as you can order SARMs. Second, Secondly, I don't know. I've never met a single person that's had their door busted down for for having their personal use of steroids taken. Right. It doesn't happen unless you're trying to distribute well, you see it and make the, a business out of it. No one's fucking with you for yeah. a 10, 10 cc vial of fucking. Like you see with the like the CrossFit sports, all those people come like bringing them down for using uh, these SARMs because I, they must have thought they're not testing for them yet because yes. they're so new. They think if they use a SARM, they're not testing for it, so I can use this now. Anecdotally, um, when you read the message boards and you, you talk to people, and I talk to people who I, I believe to be reputable, the effects from a SARM are they're not like steroids. It's not not even close. And SARMs also promise, uh, or or one of the targets, uh, I think target uh, actions of a SARM is also to not affect your natural hormone levels. So the problem with taking testosterone is if you take testosterone, your body stops making testosterone. So they're trying to create these drugs that have less side effects, give you the muscle building effects, but also they don't shut down testosterone. Mm. The problem is SARMs do shut down testosterone, at least at the doses that people are using. Because the studies, the doses that they're using in the studies are far lower than these kamikaze doses that people online are using. We just don't know what they do. Here's the other thing. People are buying them because they're afraid of the black market and they're afraid that, oh my God, I don't know what's in this black market, you know, vial of testosterone. I hate to break this to you. You don't know what's in the, that that bottle of SARMs either. Right. None of these are regulated. They're not a big enough market for people to... Nobody knows how to test them properly. And the very few independent lab tests that I have seen have come out all over the place where you know doses are off, dosages are off, excuse me, where uh, the, there's un chemicals that they can't identify that are in them. I've read scary stories of people getting their eyesight uh, permanently affected. There was one SARM that caused people to have like an orange tint uh, yeah, or damaged night that. vision. Yeah. Like, like it's crazy. I, I no, I don't think if I mean, look, you want to experiment on your body, it's your body. But keep in mind, you are this is a very high risk uh, kind of game that you're playing. We don't know what they do. None of them have been approved. And the place you're getting them from, is, who knows what they're putting in your bottle. And on top of that, you're, a lot of people are, are even injected. Like peptides tend to be injected. SARMs at least are oral. But wow, you really need to be careful right. when you inject a random something into your body. I mean, it just takes the wrong thing to cause uh, you know, a bad reaction.